but I'm kind of coming to the realization that a lot of the like fun races that I have scheduled over the weekends are starting to add up and kind of take a toll as far as just feeling fresh and ready to go. Hey everyone, how's it going today? So originally on the calendar, we had a 35 minute tempo run today, but I'm kind of coming to the realization that a lot of the like fun races that I have scheduled over the weekends are starting to add up and kind of take a toll as far as just feeling fresh and ready to go like week to week. Uh, it's definitely building up a little bit, doing those more like race pace efforts uh, on the weekends. So I think what I'm gonna do today is just cut back a little bit on the workout, um, just turn it into more of a 35 minute run, maybe do one mile of this shorter run today uh, at kind of a tempo effort. And then once we get back inside, I'll talk about, you know, how my shoes are looking, uh, the Nike Zoom X Invincible Flyknit after 100 miles or about 161 kilometers. Okay, we're all set. Word to the wise, you probably already knew, but I wouldn't try and go tempo threshold pace in the Zoom X Invincible flying it. A little bit hard to do. All right guys, let's do this. Let's check out the pace really quick before we head out uh, of this trail here. The average pace for the run came in today at 919 per mile uh, or 547 per kilometer. Uh, and you can see that that fast mile that I ran was mile three, and it was at about 8.06 per mile or 5.02 per kilometer. So I'll just leave the paces up there for a second so you can take a look at the run and the mileage overall. But otherwise, let's get back inside and talk about these shoes. Like I said, not really perfect for speed day. <laughs> All right, everybody. So the main focus of today's video is just to talk about how these shoes have been holding up for me, um, you know, after 100 miles of running out on the roads and just light buffed out trails. Um, the main point that I want to make today is that for me personally, I don't really focus so much on the outsole. Uh, as a heavier runner, you know, coming in around 240 pounds uh, most days, the outsole isn't necessarily going to wear out just because I'm heavier or anybody is putting a lot of miles in a shoe. I think I have a pretty um, efficient stride, I guess I'll say. I don't think I drag my feet very often. I don't think I create a lot of friction on the outsoles that is done unnecessarily to wear out an outsole prematurely. This Nike Invincible Flyknit has a particularly large amount of rubber, um, and these little nubs on the bottom are also, you know, sticking out or protruding pretty far. Um, but again, because I'm not really dragging my feet, because I'm not creating that extra friction on the ground, for me personally, it's usually the uh, midsole that is going to go before the outsole. And, you know, I've made a couple comments before on my channel, but usually around 250 miles, that's getting pretty close to the end of the life of a shoe for me. And I'll show you some more specific examples here on, you know, what I'm looking at. So first off, you know, you can see on the outsole, it looks pretty good. Not a lot there. I also have a zoomed in view. Um, I will say there's a little bit of wear where I usually get it just on the outside or the lateral portion of the heel. 
that's where there's some of those little rubber nubs wearing down just based on how I land on the ground most days. Um, but overall, like I said, I think there's probably a few hundred miles left before I'd have to get rid of this shoe because of the outsole alone. But because I'm a heavier runner, you can start to see after 100 miles, look at the creasing on this Zoomex foam from the side view. And I hope you get a good view of that. You can see that both uh, on the lateral side and in this medial or in interior portion of the shoe. There's just a lot of heavy creasing in there. And all that heavy creasing, I think there's a pretty good example of it here as well. Just kind of in towards the arch of the foot on that medial side of this right shoe. All of that creasing is leading towards basically the foam being less and less effective at a couple things. One, supporting my foot. Two, uh, you know, returning the energy each time I take a running stride. Uh, so it's just not going to be as efficient as moving at moving me forward. But like I said, you know, I'm really more focused on I don't want to injure myself. And if the foam is coming flatter and flatter and not doing as good of a job at supporting me, it means I may be sinking in differently into the midsole than they originally intended when they made it. It may be providing less support comfort or cushioning on my knees and ankles and things like that, which for me has been an issue. You know, I've talked in the past about having some pain in my ankle, which could be leading to stress fractures or something like that. And the last thing I want to do is continue to use a shoe after I'm compressing that midsole and it's not providing that cushion or support as I run each day. So, you know, you can see the creasing on the midsole. That is my main concern. The upper actually looks pretty good. Now, these are dirty, uh, but don't discredit, you know, the shoe themselves for the dirtiness of it. I've taken these out in the rain. There's no uh, tearing on the laces. There's no real tearing on the upper at all. The upper looks like, again, that will also outlast any of my issues that I have with the midsole. But I'll give you a good look at the shoe. I'll kind of do a nice full, you know, zoom around the shoe. I wouldn't worry too much about this uh, little peeling on the interior part of the shoe. That's again just something from my stride as I bring my foot forward in the knee drive portion of my left leg. I tend to sometimes kick the in inside of that shoe and it causes some tearing. Pretty common for me no matter what shoes I'm using. That's more a me thing than a shoe thing. So again, I'll give you that zoomed in view so you can see the overall wear, but for the most part, they're just dirty. And my biggest concern is that overall wear on the midsole. So 100 miles in on this shoe, I think they're probably right on pace for about that 200 to 250 mark for me. So you really have to tread that line carefully of trying to get the most out of your shoes and keeping yourself healthy. So since sizing up to a 13, I've absolutely loved the shoe. I honestly would probably buy it again, even if it seems like that midsole is on the shorter lifespan, just because it's so cushioned. It is my go-to right now for those easy miles, and it's also been carrying me through some of my longer runs, honestly, just because, again, of that comfort of the midsole. So I still approve, you know, that shoe. I still really appreciate what it does for me, but I just want to give you that little insight into the way it looks, into the wear patterns overall, and my main concern, which is the life of the midsole. So... That's everything I have for today as far as the shoe. You know, I already kind of talked about my pacing and everything outside, so that's out of the way. Hope you guys enjoyed. Give me a thumbs up if you did and subscribe down below if you want to follow along for more content. We've got a race this weekend that'll be pacing my brother. So that's ultimately, you know, like I said, why I was taking it a little bit easier today. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions about the shoe, leave it down below. I hope to see you in the next video.